Given your rich background and immense track record in banking and finance, what are you doing in politics? The truth is that Malam Nuhuri Badu, who won the primary of the Action Congress of Nigeria, came to me and asked me to run with him. Under our laws, you have to be running on the same ticket. And that, that is the uh, easier answer to your question. The other part of it is that I examined the party and I found that in the places where they have governments, notably Lagos, they have done exceedingly well. Succession has been uh, normal, not, not traumatic, and the successor has taken over from uh, uh, and, and, and run, is running with the government and doing excellent and uh, uh, delightful things for the citizens of Lagos. And I then said to myself, this is a team to join. This is a team to join. If we can do what is being done in Lagos in more parts of Nigeria, uh, certainly in the center, then Nigeria will turn the bend uh, rather quickly. With regards to the siting of federal government projects, is it right for the central government to discriminate against states controlled by opposition parties? You know, the role of the federal government is clear in the constitution and the role of the president of Nigeria is clear in the constitution. Whereas somebody must come on the platform of a political party to become president, once he becomes president or she becomes president, then he or she is the president of Nigeria no longer of the party, no longer a candidate, no longer the president of where you come from, it's the president of Nigeria. It is unfortunate that people who get into such high offices then say to themselves, we are going to punish those who did not vote for us. That is not the way it's supposed to be. A vote is the expression of a person's conscience. This is who I think can do it. Once that exercise one that has been expressed, right? And then we come out and say, this is the winner. That winner takes responsibility for the entire state. How will the Action Congress of Nigeria do it exactly the way I've described? We will campaign hard. We are Action Congress of Nigeria candidates. The moment we win, we become president, Nuhuri Badu, Vice President Fola Adeola of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, taking responsibility for all Nigerians, uh, whichever shade of opinion they express at the election or they continue to express even after the elections. For as long as they remain Nigerians, they become a responsibility and that is how governance ought to be, that is how we will govern. With your highly rewarding private sector experience, what do you think is the main problem with the Nigerian economy? You know, I joke with people and say that in the last 30 years, the only growth that we have witnessed in this country is population growth. Anything that is not, the, the economy will not run itself on auto. Anything that is not properly managed and properly attended to will, will go wayward. You know, so it's a wayward economy. Um, mono mono is, is, is dependent almost ex exclusively on oil. You know, just bring it out, sell it. Don't even process it, you know. Just sell it as crude and then buy what you need. Spend more than you have, uh, more than you earn. Um, just continue to um, use your wealth for recurrent expenditure. The 2011 budget came out with over 65% uh, recurrent expenditure. No investment, no investment on a continuing basis. Now, well, that, that, that is what appears to be economy. Education is bad. Those who are going to think for this country in the future are not being produced. You know, the road is bad. There is no light, uh, no, 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 no constant power supply. How can an economy work? You know, no knowledge, no infrastructure, no investment. Um, just, just a wayward economy, that's what we have today. That's why it's not working. No, no wayward person gets respect, you know. What is your view of the do-or-die political philosophy as espoused by some Nigerians? We in Action Congress are social democrats. In basic lingo, all we want to achieve is to get institutions 
back to performing the roles that they were set up to perform. Let government stay away uh, 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 from the face of people, but let people feel government by what it is doing, the services that it is rendering, to invest in infrastructure, to uh, um, support agriculture, to make education again what we, we, we need to significantly invest in for our future, to save and encourage Nigerians to save, create an, env an enabling environment for everybody to be the best that they can be once they choose to be, right? Certainly to fulfill their greatest aspiration. Have a happy citizenry. That is what we are going into government to do. That is the purpose of government. And um, we will converse for votes. We will converse for votes within the laws and uh, uh, the electoral laws and the concern of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. For those who want to do and die, uh, we wish them all the luck. We want to do and live. How will you ensure accountability for yourself and for members of your government? The current level of cor corruption has been supported by the government that is in power. From May 29, when we come into office as President Nuhuribadu and Vice President Fola Adeola, accountability starts. Nigerians will know how much their country earns every month and how it is uh, 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 disbursed, what we have done with the money. The budget, we go back to the uh, uh, um, national plan, you know, a rolling plan, where we say to ourselves, this is a five-year plan. These are the things we want to do over the next five years. And the budget annually will reflect the plan. On a quarterly basis, we are going to let Nigerians know how far we are working on capital expenditure and the projects that they are tied to. It's about transparency. There will be no opaqueness in this government. Everything will be transparent and people will be allowed to ask their questions. There will be a president uh, uh, um, question and answer time on a monthly basis where citizens are able to engage their president as what is going on, how is it going on, and raise issues. Uh, and to the extent that we have a challenge, we go back there and fix it and come back to the people. You know, what is going to make it easy for us is if we win this election, it will be the first time that Nigerians are, have been able to use their votes to put in place their own government. Okay, That is the power of the people. Mindful of that, we know that if, we're, if we don't account to the people that have put us in power, with the same votes that they put us in power, they can get us or take us out of power. So it's, it's very clear to us. The third point is that that is the life we have lived. That is the way we have lived our lives. In everything that I have done, accountability has been uppermost. In everything that Malam Nuhuribadu has done, I mean, I don't even need to talk about his own. He's the one that has been chasing people who have refused to be accountable. And the Action Congress of Nigeria is clear in his mind that that is the direction that we must go. And we have no problems with that at all. What are your plans for youth employment and job creation? There are 12 million graduates today who, are, who don't have any type of job. Now, how do we create employment for 12 million people? It cannot be in one way. What we want to do is to tie every, every policy of government that has to do with spending money to employment. How many jobs will this create? How many jobs will this create? I'll give you an example, just one example. Let us take the issue of power, all right? Now, everybody wants us to generate power and distribute it and let it get to the end user, all right? Power has a cost. Now, our own understanding of that process is that the only way we can sustain power for all time in this country is by involving Nigerians in the process of generating, distributing, and transmitting the power. Not by going to a, a big country abroad and buying power turbines and generators to come and put here. All right? So, in the short term, right, 
we will quickly, rapidly ramp towards 10,000 megawatts, right? And while that is being done, and we have that constant, Nigerians are put in a, in, a, in, a, in a lab, let them design a power system for the country. And that will form the basis of some form of industrialization where those things that we need to get to 40,000 megawatts will carry development along with it. The plan is, is ready. We will be able to use our own materials locally, use our own engineers locally, fabricate things locally, and that is the, uh, the, the job, prov provide the kind of job that is sustainable. Um, if we bought generators today, after five years or 10 years, they spoil again, and then we have to look for money to go and buy from outside. We want to get to a situation where by the time we are getting to 15,000 megawatts, 20,000 megawatts, 25,000 megawatts, you will see industrial growth. You will see those uh, uh, who will require power and who will be able to pay for the power. There's no point in asking somebody who is unemployed and say this is power, and they can't even buy that power. So it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, um, linked development program. The other example is housing, all right? The government of um, Oribadu is proposing to deliver a million houses. Let us even say over the first term of that government. But do you know what it takes to deliver a million houses? The cement. Even if it is five doors per unit, you need five million doors. You understand? Five million knobs, right? F ceilings will be there and so on and so forth. Where will we get that? if not from importation. But we don't want to spend the money, right? And find that I haven't spent the money, no job has been created here, uh, nothing has happened here, we've just bought houses from abroad. So we begin to invest that same, that same money in creating industries that will support that process. It, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. At the end of the day, we'll have the million houses, we'll have jobs created for people, and it will be the end of Nigerians can't um, plaster this. Nigerians can't plaster that. It's going to affect education. It's going to affect um, um, skill acquisition. It's going to affect um, small-scale businesses. It's going to ask, uh, affect medium-scale businesses. We just have to focus and think deep and network everything. And while we are achieving the targets that we have set for ourselves, we are also creating employment. That is number two. Number three is that, you know, when I left home, I was given this charter when I, when I was young, growing up, go to school, study hard, get good grades, and get a great job, right? I did, and the great jobs came at my own time. We still give the same charter to our children, right? Except that they've been to school, they've studied hard, right? They've got good grades, but there is no job. Forget about great job. There is no job at all. And we are saying to ourselves, all right, fine. Can we tinker with the charter and say, create a great job and there, thereby become an entrepreneur and take care of yourself. And if your job expands, employ one or two other people. So it's going to be a combination of all the things that I said earlier, our projects must lead to employment and we must get our youth to look at the possibility of setting up their own businesses, owning their own businesses, and employing people. In that combination, we'll suck in 12 million people within a very short time. How can women be 